Do you think we're alone? Well, I have made it my thing to not answer that question because I'm trying to take a multiple perspective on it. Let's dismiss from the start UFOs, okay? Uh, if, if there are silver guys coming down and disemboweling cattle and kidnapping farmers, they're not intelligent life. Just look at their behavior. But the gap goes back even farther. For two billion years, the Earth was prime real estate, ever since microbes made an oxygen atmosphere. And there were no people around to defend it. What, slime molds and reptiles are gonna tell you go away? There are no signs in the rocks not only of ancient cities, but of the biological changes that would have come with colonization from above. Now, the SETI program has been looking for aliens, and we've already wiped out one part of their scenario, vast tutorial beacons uh, beneficently given by altruistic advanced aliens to help us youngsters along. But if we ever do get a hit, it will change our culture forever. We would become consumers of a greater culture. This happened to all human civilizations. But let's say we go out a million years or a billion years and it really looks like we're alone. We still haven't heard anything, seen anything. The fact what that do you say? I've been in this for years and there's a tendency among all the bright minds who get involved in this field to pick one, to pick one explanation and say, this is it. Uh, Earth-like planets are rare. Life is difficult to get started. The internet will become so such a honeypot, and we'll all get implants, and we'll all get plugged in, and we'll be so much bigger than we are now as people, almost godlike, that no one will want to go in starships because you'll be lobotomized. But what all of these explanations do is they leap on one thing and say, this explains the silence. But very few of them deal with the problem of exceptions. Let's say 99.99999% of human beings become these cyber gods there will still be some funky exception, hell's angels, who will say, ah, forget that, make starships, go to some other planet, starry system, have babies, and pass on that trait. Whatever exception to whatever your favorite explanation is, that's what's going to fill the galaxy. And we calculate that would fill the galaxy in 60 million years. And that's a sh very short time. And, and I blink. Okay, well, now let me take you to the time when you would be confident and it's going to fall into one or two buckets. Either there are going to be alien intelligent life or there's not. Well, the implications if there's not alien life anywhere, anywhere, then I would have to say that we're living in a simulation or a, an intelligent creation. Because in my opinion, the odds of that in a randomly created universe are virtually nil. If we're totally alone, yes. then the implications are theological. That it implies that the galaxy has maybe one chance to fill with intelligence, and that would be us going out there. It puts an even greater burden on us to make our civilization succeed. But suppose we do make contact and we start getting information. What happens to our culture at that point? Well, I think that one of the great dangers and one of the reasons why they might be keeping us isolated in a, in a zoo is that as soon as we do meet an advanced alien civilization, our culture will be effectively over. I mean, we see this from first contacts all across human civilization. Maybe they're keeping us isolated to find out what we would become.